Calls now for Dr. Zorba Pasture. If you have a question, the number to call is 270-9933. Dr. Pastor joins us from his clinic in Oregon. Hi, Zorba. Hi, good to see you guys. Good to see you as well. While we're waiting for some of the calls to clear, let's talk a little bit about the article you wrote in the Sunday paper about diet soda and stroke. Right, what was that right, about? Right. Well, this has to do with the Nurses Health Study. And the Nurses Health Study is a long term study looking at women and looking at their health over a period of time. We've gotten a tremendous amount of information about that, about aspirin with women, hypertension, diabetes, and so on. And one of the things they found was an association between diet soda and stroke and if you had diet soda on a fairly regular basis you appear to be at a higher risk for stroke now here's the interesting thing you can't say there's a cause and effect it might just be that women who are drinking diet soda are more likely to have a stroke because they may not be uh, in shape they may have other medical problems but they controlled for diabetes hypertension and so on and still they found this association so I've got a, I've got some thoughts about this first of all diet soda Soda does not get you to lose weight. I mean, the more diet soda we drink as a society, the heavier we have become. So the idea that you're going to lose weight with diet soda doesn't seem to be the case because it may be that you stimulate your, your taste buds to eat more food somewhere else. And I think if we see an association between diet soda and anything bad, we kind of have to think about why we're drinking diet soda in the first place. And I think plain old water or fizzy water is really the way to go because this is disturbing information. It really is. Stick with the water. All right, we have some calls for you, Doctor. We'll start with Bob in Jefferson. Hi, Bob. Hi there. Hi, Doctor. This isn't a Hi. question, but it, it, it's a thank you. Uh, over a year ago, I had to get off NSAIDs because it was uh, hurting my kidneys. And I have arthritis in my thumbs, and I couldn't find anything to help. I tried Tylenol, but that didn't seem to help. But then you came on the air and said, you have to take up to 4,000 milligrams for two weeks. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to say, it works. Oh, oh wow. And oh, great. I am pretty, great. I am pretty much pain-free in my thumbs because mm -hmm. I take Tylenol uh, continuously. Well, another satisfied Excellent. customer, Bob. Excellent. Thank, Thank you. Thanks for calling Thank in. Thank you, Bob. That was nice. Thank you very much. You know, uh, it's very interesting because people say, well, the Tylenol doesn't do the job. Tylenol, which is acetaminophen. But if you're a non-drinker, you can take 4,000 milligrams a day. If you drink more than two drinks a day, then we limit you to about 2,000 milligrams. And there's an eight-hour acetaminophen that's out there. And so you take two in the morning when you get up, two at night when you go to sleep, and two in the middle of the day. The drug is very effective in that dose, and this is a great example. So it's nice to get a thank you. I really, Whoa. really, really appreciate that. Great. All right, let's go to Nancy in New Glarus. Hi, Nancy, what's your question? Hi, and thank you for taking my call. You bet. Wondering what depletes vitamin B12 and what foods are there that can maybe help build it up? Well, uh, nothing really depletes vitamin B12. You only need minuscule amounts of B12. B12 only comes from animal sources, by the way. And so many vegans, because they use vegetable sources, will take a B12 vitamin to bump themselves up. But believe it or not, even if you're a vegan, it turns out you have an animal source, and those are insects that we find in the actual uh, things that you're actually eating, insect parts. But getting back to it, nothing really depletes B12 but it's possible you're not absorbing B12 from your small intestine. And if there's a question, it's very easy to do a B12 level and see what's, what's going on. Okay. Let's go to Lori in Stoughton. Insects. <laughs> Insects, yes. Yum. <laughs> Lori in Stoughton, go ahead. Hi. I'm, this is in regards to your um, article that you had in Sunday's paper. My husband and I don't drink diet soda, but we do put uh, sucralose in a teaspoonful in our coffee every day. Is that mm -hmm. as harmful as a diet soda? Hmm. You know, uh, first of all, it's an association study, but diet soda has lots of other things. You look at aspartame, which is still the most common thing at all in diet soda. And I'm not telling people not to use minimal amounts of sucralose, which is uh, the name, you know, the generic name for Splenda. So I don't think there's really any issue with that at this point. It's just that diet soda is associated with this, and why are we drinking it when we're not losing weight? That's, that's kind of what I think is the bottom line. All right. So, okay. yes, I think you could use it. Okay. All right. Good to know. Let's go to Betty in Wisconsin Dells. Hi, Betty. What's your question? Yeah, my question was, uh, how long does you have pneumonia after you take your antibiotics um, for the six days that you're prescribed? 
You mean how long does it take you to get better? It can yeah. take a while. When you get pneumonia, it's very serious. It could take four to six weeks before you back up to normal. Pneumonia is a serious cause of death in this country. It's always been a serious cause of death. It just takes a while to rebound. So hang in there, eat well, do right, do some exercises, and it, but it, and realize it doesn't go away at the end of the antibiotics. It usually takes a month longer. It's been a bad you, year for that. You got that, right. Susan? Yeah. yeah. Yes, bad that's year. right. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you everyone for calling in, Zorba. Thank you for your time. We'll Thanks, Zorba. Good to see you. Pleasure. Well, the final check nice. your forecast.